let me see uh what did I want to start because uh I wanted to do some analysis but I also wanted to talk about like like the mental aspect of trading and, and stuff like that um but uh who's who's on we got um I, f- I feel bound how to say your name, bro. Is it Iqbal? You, bro? Yeah, it is Iqbal. Oh, okay. All right. So I got it right. I just, I felt bad. I just didn't know how to pronounce it. But, but do any of y'all have any, um, any questions to start off? Yeah. If anybody has any questions, type it in the chat box. My bad. I got everybody's muted. So no one speaks over you or anything. Oh, oh, no, that's fine. People can, people can speak. I, that's what I actually, that's what I want. Any like Q, like Q and A type. Um, so you want me to unmute everybody because I know they got like background noise just in case. Okay. All right. Wait, how did? How did? Right, nah, hey, let, let let people let people unmute themselves when they want to talk. Otherwise, we don't have too much background noise. Oh yeah, yeah. Just mute yourself until you're ready to talk, and then when you're ready to talk, just just unmute. Yeah. All right. I'm out. Wait. Uh, Is this the chat? Oh, here's. How do I, uh, Anybody who wants to unmute themselves, you're welcome to now. I give everybody permission. Thanks, bro, for recording. Oh, good stuff, man. Been vegan for five months. That's what's up. What's your bias on UJ? Okay. All right. So I'll go over UJ first. Um, let me. Man, how do I get some of this stuff out the way? Okay. All right. Let's go over UJ real quick. So, well, let's go over. For the dig spot really quick, because this um this is pretty telling as well. So <laughs> as you can see, um the DXY technically still is in the uptrend. And I'll explain to you exactly why I believe so. So for me, this this previous I would say this is the previous low. You can argue that this is and that's fine. Here's the previous the previous low um on the DXY on the daily time frame, which was July ninth so a little over a month ago probably six weeks now um this low hasn't been violated yet this structure hasn't been broken um and you can argue that all right let's draw the trend line here because um i didn't really do any analysis on this but um you can argue that it broke below the trend line but always wait for the retest the heck oh so what happens is uh when a trend line is broken right and this is why some people get confused as like that when when price closes below a trend line right most technical traders which is why they fail will automatically think that the trend has changed <laughs> i teach everybody including stanley who most of you guys um if you're watching this probably learn from or dakota um who's a student of stanley um regardless it, it came it, it it came from my tree so hopefully stanley's teaching you this as well um, but regardless, um, for me, when price closes below a trend line or above a trend line in the downtrend, it doesn't necessarily mean that the trend has changed. For me, I look at has structure, has previous structure been broken? Because this right here, a lot of people sold this right here. Um, because what happens is price closed below your trend line and it closed on with this particular candle, which most people call like a hanging man or a shooting star or whatever. I don't, there's like 10,000 different names for these candles. Don't worry about it. It's just about identifying it. Um, or this one actually is technically Murabozu um, with no wick on the bottom. Um, and this candle by itself normally will um, give you a bearish bias um, for the most part. But when price closes below a trend line, more times than not, it's going to come back up and retest the trend line. Or it's going to come back up and retest like the moving average above the trend line and then come back down. So you're looking for a reversal pattern after price resets the trend line. So this is why I never really went short on the dollar long term because I was waiting for um, the retest and then some kind of drop here. So like an evening star or a double top or a head and shoulders, something, something that would indicate that price is going to continue its bearish uh, momentum. And as you can see here, two candles later, after the retest, boom, price closes A, back above your trend line, and B, back up above your major half point here at 95. So if you guys are familiar with um, the quarters theory, <laughs> you have your major large at 90, okay? Your next major large is at 100, okay? So in between, you have your, your four quarters. You have 90 to 92.5, okay? 
92 to 92.5 to 95, which is your major half. So halfway between 90 and 100. And then here's your last, um, here's your last uh, large quarter point before um, you reach 100 up here. Do I have a mark? Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. So it not only closed back above your trend line, it also closed back above your major half point and your moving average. So if you guys don't have your moving average is set, um, mine is eight and 18. Let me double check. Um, inputs. Yeah. So your EMA is eight and your SMA or on trading view, it's just moving average is 18. Um, those are the ones that I use. So you guys can continue to use the ones that you use, or you can mimic mine as a matter. Uh, it's, if you're using, I don't even know what Stanley uses to be honest, but if you're using what he's using, it's, it's probably not much different than what this is here. Um, this actually, these settings on the moving average just came from Sean Lee himself. Uh, when he, when I, uh, went to one of his meetups out in LA, um, these are the ones that he was went, went over. So I actually changed mine to his settings. So you can feel free to change your CDs or keep whatever Stanley has. It doesn't matter. But as you can see, there's three confluences here, um, that will tell you, that will tell you that, um, price is going to continue to head, uh, north. That price is going to continue to be bullish. Um, and so in this case, um, we would still be looking for price to close above your, your simple moving average right here. Okay, because what happens is price now is trapped in between your averages. So two things can happen. This candle is going to break above or it's going to fail here and continue to head uh, in, in, a, in its bearish direction. So um, I'm not fully, fully, fully sold on the on long term bullish yet. But once I see price close above the your simple moving average here and your averages cross, then I'll be then I'll be fully convinced. But until then, we just read and react. Um, so <clears throat> because of my bullish bias on the DXY, that leads us also to a bullish bias on USD base pairs. Um, but really quick, I'm going to, uh, uh, zoom out here. Is this the one I was analyzing? Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> another way to look at, um, like naked market structure is with the line chart. So <clears throat> what I look for is where multiple peaks meet in the same area okay so one of the ones that i was analyzing earlier was this particular one right here so as you can see here i'm using this particular peak right here okay so if we take this line right here we have one peak right here right here right here right here so this is a this is um a, a pretty strong uh area of i would say structure because it's depending on where price is, whether it's uh, support or resistance. So if we go back to our candle chart, you'll see price bounce off of that line perfectly. Okay. You're not going to get this line on a, on a candlestick chart. So, um, toggle back and forth between candlestick and line chart, and you'll start to kind of see, um, where your true market structure is. Um, I always use the line chart. You can also use the line chart for, for, um, <laughs> for trend lines as well. Um, I do both. So I draw them on the wicks and also draw them on um, the line chart, which really is just the body of the candlesticks. So you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean. For example, um, let's go back to the line chart. And I'll redraw this trend line on the line chart. So here's my point A, my point B. You'll see what I mean when we go back onto the candlestick chart. It doesn't start on the wick. It starts on the, on the bodies of the candle. So this trend line is also, um, or not also, it's equally as important as the one on the wicks. Um, I use both. Again, it's up to you. It's, this is really subjective as far as uh, what you prefer, um, but both are, are pretty important. But at, going back to this, this structure right here at 94.5, say 94.5, um, you see price bounce off perfectly off of that, close back above your trend line back above your moving average back above your major half point at 95 um so that's where i get my bullish bias on the dollar um so based off of that um let's go over to uj really quick so uj what happened was price is trending up and up and up and it's still in an uptrend okay <laughs> this previous low hasn't been broken yet so to me it had um it's i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't take any shorts on this yet okay what happened was, as you can see, if, if you guys are familiar with the quarters theory, um, the basis of it is that 
price movement on a daily basis is not random. It flows from quarter point to quarter point. So as you can see, price is flowing from quarter point to quarter point, okay? It closes above your major at 110, okay? Comes up to 112.5 and then retests the previous quarter point and bounces off. And what we have here is, okay, let's go here. What we have here is an incomplete, oh my bad. An incomplete, let me just take this on my chart. An incomplete inverted head and shoulders. So the reason why I'm looking at this is because you have your left shoulder here, you have your head, and you had it retest the neckline right here. Okay, and then you have um, this hammer here, or whatever you want to call it, right at your demand zone. Okay, so as you can see here, this is why this is why I drew this box. If you guys are confused, so you have this structure here, structure here, um, okay, here and here and here okay this is a pretty strong demand zone if price closes below then it becomes supply zone and then we're looking for for possible shorts down to 110 or or even lower than that um and then you can even draw this trend line right here and so i don't know exactly what stanley's um analysis was on uj but this is mine where i'm looking for on the daily time frame inverted head and shoulders pattern okay and then I've, i haven't analyze on h4 yet so let's go do that right now so on h4 we have a morning star here okay and this is probably 50 mm, percent let's let's break the fib out really quick uh, uh retrace uh you want to look 50 50 percent isn't something that's like super super strong as far as what i look for in a in a, in a reversal for me i'm looking for 38.2 61.8 or 78.6 or somewhere in between 61.8 and 78.6. Um, 61.8 being your golden ratio is actually, actually why I have it um, as gold. Um, anyways, uh, but 50% is, is, is a good retracement level because it's half of the previous move. Okay, so if you're going off one to one, then you're looking for this move up. But for me, for me, uh, I trade quarters theory, so I buy take profits always at the next quarter. So we we'll have to watch price here. Okay, the, the moving averages are across to the downside, and it momentum right now is pretty bearish. Uh, it also is Sunday, so it's the beginning of the week. So I wouldn't make any moves on it yet. I'm not long or short on it. I know Stanley said he was long and was hedging. Um, I don't really recommend hedging, but uh, <laughs> um, it's fine, especially if you're an experienced trader like Stanley. <laughs> um yeah but so for right, for right now at this moment my bias is uh but again i'm not taking any longs just yet i want to wait because this could go bearish at any moment so just more so read and react but i will be watching this pair in particular um because this is the one i have been paying the most attention to over the weekend um but with that being said that's my analysis on that so before i go any further did you guys have any other questions about about UJ, anything, maybe why I got that analysis or if you're confused or anything, speak now forever, hold your peace. I don't even know who else is on here. Nobody. Man, you guys are boring. Someone asked what confluences would you wait for to go long? Oh, my bad, hold up. I'm still, I'm, my bad guys, I'm still figuring out how to work this thing. All right, there we go. All right, what confluences would you wait for to go long? Can't speak, there's too much noise here, my bad. Oh, okay, gotcha. My bad, Arthur. Um, <laughs> so for me, I would look for a reversal pattern. Now, normally, okay, normally this would be good enough for me, this morning star pattern right here, okay? But this was right at market close um, of last week on Friday, and I never take trades right when the market's about to close. I never do that. Some people do, and that's completely fine. It's, it's just your particular taste and what you prefer. That's more subjective. There's no like right or wrong with that. Um, but I, I personally never take trades uh, when the market's about to close. I just, I don't do it. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I would be looking for some type of reversal pattern, um, maybe a second rejection to 50 right here. Um, but it could come down all the way to here, 61.8, and I would look for a reversal pattern there. So any kind of, any kind of bullish reversal pattern. So Morningstar, 
inverted head and, uh, head and shoulders, uh, double bottom, et cetera, those kind of things or, or, uh, a, a, a pin bar to, you know, to one of these, um, one of these, uh, Fibonacci ratios. So, you know, some, a, all right, let me draw it out. So a candle, something like this, where you have almost like a hammer, essentially. So you have this and then, um, something like a, uh, a wick like this to the bottom where it's pretty long in the bottom, which tells you that, um, you know, they kind of snatched what they needed and they're ready to, 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 um, to go bullish again. So that's what I would look for. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to explain because a lot of it is experience. So I just kind of, I know, it, you know, some things you just can't explain, but that would be the best way to explain it is look for a bullish reversal pattern. So if you're familiar with all your reversal patterns and, and candlesticks, your Japanese candlesticks and whatnot, um, then you should be good as far as knowing when to execute that trade. Um, you never want to enter prematurely. Like for example, like right now, I wouldn't, I, I don't enter trades on Sunday really. Um, I have in the past, but to be honest, uh, from a discipline standpoint and in my trading plan, I don't enter trades on Sunday. So I'll wait for this to unfold, uh, you know, tomorrow, probably tomorrow during Asia, I'll look again or a little bit before Asia. So I have an idea of, you know, what I'm looking for. If I, if I see potential for it to go bullish or if I think it's going to go bearish. Um, so I look, I look somewhere tomorrow around like four or 5 PM Eastern time. Um, I'm on the East coast for anybody that's curious. Um, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, again, I, I would just look for, um, how do I go back to the chat? There we go. Um, yeah, yeah, Arthur, I would just look for, um, some type of bullish reversal pattern added on to this. Cause again, th this happened on Friday. So I'm, to me, this doesn't even exist anymore. And now I'm looking for current price action. What is price going to do now? <clears throat> okay. So if it closes below this, um, this demand zone right here. Okay. Which technically it kind of did on H4. Um, but again, I drew this on a daily time frame. So another thing guys, like if you draw trend lines or, supply and demand zones or anything along those lines on a certain time frame, you're looking for price to respect that on that particular time frame. So if I drew, if I draw this on the daily time frame, a close below on the H4 does not violate this demand zone in my eyes. If I draw this on the H4 and it closes below on the H4, then yeah, okay, I'm looking for a possible short. Um, but anything you draw on the daily time frame has to respect it on the daily time frame, nothing below. Um, same thing with weekly, anything below weekly. If you draw a weekly, a weekly trend line, you're looking for, you know, if you have a daily close above it, right. Um, you could have another daily close right back below it. And then on your weekly time frame, you just see a wick coming right back down below the trend line. So always, always look for those te technical analysis tools to respect the tool on that particular trend line that you draw it on. Okay. Um, so Arthur, I hope, hopefully that, um, that answered your question. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. All right, cool. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Maybe any other pairs that you wanted me to look at? Um, I know we don't have too many people on here, but Hey, go to EU. EU? Who is that? Stanley? Yeah. All right, hold on. Let's go. Let's go to EU. Hey, you had your um your your DXY uh, bullish? Yeah. All right. Wait, why don't I have this mark? What the heck? Did my stuff reset? Hold up, man. I think my uh. One second, y'all. That's literally what happened earlier. They reset my whole thing. I, I didn't understand what you just said, bro. <laughs> my fault. So that's what happened to me earlier on EU. They reset my whole chart. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. I don't know what the hell is going on right now. Hold on. Let me just look at my phone and I can answer that for you real quick. Hold up. Because this, I don't know what's going on. It's like frozen. All right, let me see if I can do it on this chart. I swear if this, if this uh, freezes too. Oh, here we go. Ooh. All right. So I was actually looking at this earlier. So on the daily chart, this actually looks a little bit confusing, right? Because 
we had the inverted head and shoulders here and it came back and it completed this, this large quarter point. Now, some of you are probably like, well, it didn't touch it. Well, if you follow the rule book of the quarter theory, it states that if price comes within 25 pips of that particular quarter point, then it, it completed. So it, it re-completed the large quarter point and bounced off of that. And this is on the daily time frame. Now, if we go to the weekly time frame, okay, what do we see? Boom. Look at how that weekly candle closed. Look at that wick all the way up to the large quarter point, all the way up through your simple moving average and back down below. So right now, price is trapped in between the averages, but my bet is that this goes bearish. Um, it's in a downtrend, okay? It's, it's been trending down since April, okay? Obviously, we've had, you know, the normal ebb and flow of price movement, but for the most part, <clears throat> it's been in a downtrend. Um, we had a little, I guess you can argue that's a little head and shoulders action, but uh, in my opinion, still in a downtrend. It hasn't violated this structure right here at, at uh, 1.175, which is your large quarter point. Um, so for the time being, um, I'm actually bearish on this. I mean, it, it, anybody that, that can look at this uh, on a weekly time frame would probably tell you the same thing, that it's going to go bearish. But again, uh, we'll see. Let's get on to the four-hour time frame. Um, so what do you have here? Oh, yeah, we have this nice double top here. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go long on this at all. Um, I would actually... Uh, it's a little bit early, but um, if this was like Monday or something, I would short this at least down, minimum down to your major half point at 1.15. That's a, that's a nice little 90 pip trade um, right there. So for anybody that's, that's feeling froggy um, and wants to take the short, go ahead. But just make sure that uh, you manage your risk properly because it is, it is Sunday and really anything can happen. Because this could shoot up here and retest this, this structure right here. Okay, which also lines up with your simple with your uh your EMA. So if we I hate using this. Uh so right here I'm talking about boom. <clears throat> okay, so it could be, come back up and retest this, which really isn't it's only like 20, 25 pips away from where price currently is. Um but really again the Sundays anything can happen. So um I don't take trades. I'm not gonna short this, but my bias is short. Um and my target on this trade, if I were to take it, would be one point one five. Um, so I will be watching this one as well on top of UJ. Oh, shit. What in the fuck? You okay? I can't. Babe, you okay? Babe, you okay? Y'all good? Sheesh. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So my bias on this would be short. Um, based off of this, it would definitely be short um, on H4 and the weekly. Again, the daily is a little bit confusing. Um, but yeah, so a lot, a lot of people, they got married to this inverted head and shoulders and you know, they're like, I'm going to take EU long to the moon. Um, and it still may go long. You know, you just, you never know. Because if we're going off H4 and we're going off this previous, um, this low right here, if we take our, our, um, our fib, okay, you're in between that, this, this golden range right here between 61.8 and 78.6. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> so who knows uh again it is early i don't really like to give like targets and stuff on sunday because you just you just don't know uh how products are going to unfold during the first 24 hours of the market being open so but again um uh me personally based off of this chart right here i would go short at least to 1.15 so if you're going to take it great it's not great um but don't hold me accountable if i'm wrong so yeah that's eu um any other pairs that you guys wanted me to look at from an analysis standpoint or any any really any questions involving forex at all you can you can you can you can you can you can hold on no you will be cad oh you can all right my bad you can yeah all right i haven't looked at this yet so this is going to be like a blind analysis all right Okay, yeah. Let's see. Let's look at the daily time frame. Okay, yeah, this is in a channel right now for sure. Um, I see this going bullish. Um, one, based off of the DXY, and two, based off the fact that price closed back above 
your ma- your major large quarter point at one point three. Um, it still had. I mean, you obviously there was a there was a gap here. You may feel that gap may not. And just by the way, guys, I don't know what you guys have heard or whatever. There's no rule that gaps have to be filled. Gap trading, I know people that have done very well doing it, but uh, I recommend stay away from it because there's no rule book and there's no guarantee that a gap is going to get filled. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen like 80 pip gaps, 100 pip gaps that people went short on that market open, never got filled, just prices shot up. So I recommend stay away from gap trading. I don't know if you guys even know what that is. If you, if you don't, great. Don't even look into it. If you do, stay away from it. Um, it's my recommendation, but to each their own. Um, but regardless, anyways, back to, back to UCAT. I got kind of distracted there. But um, back to UCAT here, yeah, I, I would like to see a close back above the uh, SMA. And as you can see, your EMA is starting to um, – hold up. Just save me from any more gap trading. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I it, here's here's my here's my thing here's my thing, man. Like, I don't I don't want to like I don't, I never want to like talk down about a certain thing, but I like I like to look out for people. Um, the 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 truth is, and here's the guy honest truth. Trading and method and everybody's methodology. Whoever somebody uh, put their stuff on mute real quick. Um, methodology is very subjective as far as um, what works for certain people. Um, strategies, um, certain types of analysis, whether it's technical analysis, uh, fundamental analysis, uh, volume spread analysis, um, Renko's, whatever it may be. Everybody has that thing, uh, market maker method, everything, everybody has that thing that works for them. Um, and that's, that's completely fine. Whatever works for you, keep, keep, keep at it. But with gap trading, it's more of a gamble due to the fact that you, there's, again, there's no rule saying that a gap has to be filled um, in order for price to continue in this particular direction. So, for example, price, price gapped here, right? all the way up here, okay? There's no rule that it has to come back down to where the previous candle closed before it goes up. There's no rule that says that. It could end up happening. And if you are short on this and it happens, great, you made money. Um, but at the end of the day, that's more of a gamble. Like a lot of people say trading is a gamble, but to me it's a calculated risk because there's skill involved. There's no skill involved in, in pulling a lever and um, you know playing the slots. That's just luck. Um, with with trading and 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 a certain methodology there's a skill set involved but with with gap trading there's no skill involved it's just a guessing game it's luck um can you tell us on which market patterns you mostly focus you see cat is bearish trending but i see your analysis all right how do i get rid of this okay um yeah yes yeah, so it actually technically it is it is bearish trending um but if you're looking at the larger scale, it's still technically in an uptrend. But if we're looking at this right here on the daily time frame, on the smaller scale, and it's weird calling the daily time time frame a smaller scale, but technically it is if you're talking about weekly and monthly. Um, this is actually in the downtrend. You have lower lows, lower highs. That's what constitutes a downtrend. Um, but since price has closed back above your your major large quarter point. Um, that's the reason why my analysis is long currently. Again, that could change at any point. Um, but coupled with my DXY analysis, um, that's the reason why I have a bullish bias here. Um, this, this channel, I don't really deal with channels like that. Um, so if you guys have questions on channels and stuff like that, I'm really not the guy. I don't really look for these things. Um, I, just, I just look for raw price action um, with with my quarter points and stuff and i'll throw fibonacci in there some trend lines and stuff like that i don't even use harmonics anymore um but yeah to me right now um and whoever said that usd cat is in the downtrend you're actually correct um however um my current bias is bullish based on all the things that i had just um that i had just mentioned so to keep your eye out on this pair um because uh, this next daily candle is going to be key in determining the directional bias of this pair. Um, cause USD cat doesn't always follow 
doesn't always match up with the DXY because of CAD. The Canadian dollar is actually pretty strong. Um, so it does have a lot of influence. Um, what are you thinking of scalping? What about EJ? Um, scalping, um, I don't prefer to scalp, but scalping is, there's no, nothing wrong with scalping at all. Um, a, a lot of traders like, like swing traders or like midterm traders. So like midterm traders, somebody that will is almost a swing trader, but it's more like maximum, maybe two or three days. Whereas a swing trader would be like for a week or a couple of weeks. Um, a lot of those like mid midterm and, and swing traders will like talk down on scalping and, and to be honest, today would be not really nice to trade on USD CAD. Basically. Oh yeah. Yeah. The holiday today. Um, cause technically it's, uh, it's Monday. Um, but yeah, with scalping guys, uh, I don't want you guys to think that that's a bad thing because I'll say this, the market is fractal. And what I mean by that is like, regardless of which time frame you're on, whether you're on the daily time frame or you're on the one minute time frame, if you're if you use technical analysis as your means of analyzing the market, you're looking for the same things regardless of which time frame you're on. So scalping is the same thing as swing trading on a lower time frame, right? So if you know obviously you want to do your directional bias on a higher time frame. Um or if you're just scalping for like maybe five, 10 pips, then you really don't, I guess you don't really need that, um, to be honest. But um, for me, I always say there's nothing wrong with scalping. It just requires more attention to the charts. You have to be on the chart all the time. For me personally, the reason why I chose midterm and swing trading is because I don't have to be on the chart all the time. I can just, I go on a chart in five seconds. I know if I have a trading opportunity or not. If I do, I take the trade and I, and I let it ride. And so my, my um, either my target is met or something, happens to where um i close my trade due to market conditions so um when it comes to um scalping um don't shy away from it just understand that it's going to require a little bit more work and chart time in order to be successful at it um that's the only difference because like like i said the market is fractal so if you're looking for double tops and double bottoms on the h4 you're looking for double tops and double bottoms on the m1 time frame on the minute chart so it just it just depends so it's that's very subjective. It's it's up to you whether you want to scalp. I don't, and I never will. Um, I, I used to when I first started trading, but I won't anymore. I don't go anywhere below the one hour time frame. It's very very rare that I do, um, and it'll be like really quick on the fifteen minute time frame. But anything below the one hour, and even sometimes the two hour, I don't go any anywhere below that. But um, again, you're looking for the same things on those on those smaller time frames. So. If you know how to read a chart on a higher time frame, you can scalp on lower time frames and get five, ten pips. And I would say profit is profit. You know, people say, people say, oh, it's easy to get five, ten pips. You're right. But if somebody can get five or ten pips on 10, 15, 20 lots, and you know, they make three, four hundred dollars a day times five, you know, that's a pretty good week. So it's a pretty good payday. At the end of the day, we're here to make money. You know, there's no, there shouldn't be any ego involved of like I can get more pips than you or you know, scalping, you don't get any pips, there's no skills involved. There's still skill involved. You have to be able to read a chart. I mean, you can only get lucky for so long before you start to fail. You know, if you have somebody that scalps and they're successful consistently, that takes skill. That's not luck getting five and 10 pips at a time, you know, because you can lose five and 10 pips the same way you can gain it. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on scalping. So if anybody has any questions in regards to that, um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's my, my outlook on that. Um, uh, Emmanuel, what about EJ? All right, let's take a look at EJ really quick. Um, okay, let's exit out of this. All right, Euro JPY. And I don't know if it makes a difference. I always use FXCM um, as far as my chart on TradingView. Um, all right, let's go to daily real quick. I haven't done analysis on this yet either. All right, let me remove all this crap. Okay. So same thing, same thing here. Um, just looking at the chart right here on bear, bear price action, I would say, I would say, um, 
Mm, I'll say bearish for the time being. Let's 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 do some analysis on this. Let's draw a trend line. Okay, that's with the wicks. Let's do it on the line chart. Okay, so your line chart trend line, and once you get once you get used to the the, the line chart, you actually don't need to use it anymore to draw your trend lines because you just know where it goes. So if I go to the line chart here, you'll probably see it'll line up pretty perfect. Yeah, so. You get you just add, through experience you kind of just get used to it. So there's your there's your um your line chart trend line. So you had your third trend line bounce, which normally is the strongest. So for me, um, I would short this based off of this, and my target would be 100 125, which is my next um my next uh major half point 127.5. Well, 127.5 would be my next target. This would be my uh, large quarter point. I forgot to uh. Put that in there. Hold up. Yeah, so around this area. I'm not going to fix it, but yeah. So this would be my first target. My second target being 125. Um, but it also, oh, let's see. I choose to go through the wicks when when drawing trend lines. Uh, Arthur, this, um, <laughs> this is ba these trend lines, that, this trend line that I just drew is based off the line chart. So like I was going over with structure before, you kind of get the true structure of the market based off the line chart um, because you don't have all these, all this noise with the wicks and whatnot. Um, <coughs> so if we go to our line chart, right? You'll see right here. Okay. This is your trend line. Okay. So that's why it goes through the wicks. Um, again, you can draw them either way. Most of the times I draw them with the line chart, but I also will draw them on the wicks because as you can see here, if you draw this on the wicks like I did in the beginning, this didn't touch it, which doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, if you can read candlesticks and read a chart, you don't really – honestly, I don't I, – it's rare that I draw, even draw trend lines anymore. Um, but just for demonstration purposes, I drew this one. So you had your third trend line bounce here. Close back below um, your major large quarter at 130. Um, and close below your moving average right here. So if we get down to the H4 time frame, um boom okay you had a perfect bounce close below you had your um this probably would have been my entry right here you have your hang i guess you call this a hanging man you have your wick up here close right back below your ema boom that's my entry right there um and then my first target like i said would be 127.5 okay uh which from current price is 120 pips so that would be a good trade um if you're going to go short Again, I don't short any. I don't take any trades on Sunday, so I personally will not be taking this trade right now. Um, if if an opportunity presents itself tomorrow, I, I might. Um, but currently, my my bias is short. Um, but that could change at any moment. Um, that's why I always say, don't guys, don't get married to your analysis because I used to have that issue all the time where, you know, let's just use this as an example. Um, you know, I would get married to this analysis. I would say, okay, this is going short. It's going short everything's pulling it short and then it goes long and then I'm, I, I don't take it long because I don't open my mind to see the opportunity of a long, right? Cause, because you get so close off to your analysis that you're like, it's going to go short. I'm looking for a short opportunity and I'm going to wait for that opportunity to take it short. And you miss the opportunity to take it long because you were married to your analysis. So um, that's why I always say, you know, just read and react. I'm currently up 80 pips on that EJ. Oh, good job, bro. Good job. That's a, that's a solid trade right there. And if I was watching, I probably would have taken that short with that trend line bounce. Um, that was a really good trade. Uh, me personally, I'm very um, conservative when it comes to trading. Um, I always wait for extra confirmation. You know, some people are high risk, and, and that's fine if it works for you. You know, with risk appetite, that's subjective as well. I never tell somebody that they're wrong for risking 10% of their account. It's just personal choice. So there's no right or wrong when it comes to risk. But uh, yeah, me personally, I, I would wait for this or this candle right here, one of the two, and I would short after that, um, you know, with the close below 130. Or if I was late and I saw this candle for it, so 16 hours later, then I would have taken a short here. Um, but some people would have shorted it right, after, like right up here, and that's completely fine. But uh, personally, I don't recommend that to my students and I don't do it myself just because I always like to wait for extra confirmation. That's just, that's just me. But yeah, that was a, that was a solid trade, bro. Um, yeah. So that's, that's EJ. 
Um, again, <clears throat> if you're not in this trade already, if you're not 80 pips up like uh, manual, I wouldn't recommend getting in right now. Um, wait for price to come back up and at least retest the EMA here because you also have a, a you know <clears throat> some market structure right here um, with this with this bounce and this candle. So again, I would wait if you're not already in. If you're already in, then at least put your stop at at, at your entry point, you know, so you can protect your profits or protect your capital. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's EJ. Um, any any other period? Let's go to AU. Let's go to AU. AU. All right, cool. Yeah. Got you, got you, got you. All right, let's do the daily time frame. Daily, daily, daily. All right, hold on. Let me get some water, man. Uh, Stanley, don't judge me. I know this ain't can't get water, but. All right. So, oh, this is beautiful. All right. Let me uh, get rid of some of this noise. <laughs> All right. So, what we have here is a beautiful um, continuation of the trend. So, as you can see, and yeah, since uh, February, okay, uh, this is the only bad thing about a free account is these little ads, but um, it's fine. Anyway, so. So February price has been trending down, 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 and down. It's been flowing in between uh, each um, quarter point. Okay, so as you can see, whoops, this is what I wanted to do. All right, cool. <laughs> so moving down, sheesh, there we go. So moving down here, okay, we had price come back up and do a double top. Even if you want to draw Fibonacci here, this is probably 78.6 or in between 61.8. Oh, 61 point on dot. Boom. Perfect. So this is your this you had a double top on a daily time frame on uh right on 61.8, your golden ratio. Um, and what happened was on Friday it closed below your large quarter point here at uh, uh 0.725. So for me personally, uh I think AU is gonna come at least down to Point seven, but first, it, there's a possibility that it could come back up and retest uh, this, or come up somewhere, maybe on H four or something here, that it'll come up and retest. Whoops. Okay, yeah. So it could it could at least come back up and retest this EMA, which is also your previous structure right here, at about seventy two ish. So about eh, about thirty pips from where price currently is. Um, so again, I would wait on this to short it, um, but my bias is short based off of this. So you have your double top there, price close below your large quarter point at 0.725. Um, your next target again would be um, 0.7 at your major large quarter point. There's many ways to determine um, like take profits and stuff. And some people just go, okay, I'm just gonna go for 100 pips or you know, I'm gonna use the uh, Fibonacci expansion tool, whatever. Uh, I just go based off of uh, the quarter theory. So again, my target is a little bit longer at 0.7. Um, but yeah, all in all, I I, I feel that um, AU is going to continue to go bearish. But again, I do I do feel as though that it's going to pull back a little bit um, today, going into tomorrow, possibly Tuesday. Um, but keep in mind, guys, that <laughs> a today, technically, or tomorrow, if you know if you're in the States, uh, is a bank holiday. And also, um, this is the first week of September, so NFPs on Friday. So USD may or may not be smooth this week. Um, but also keep in mind that a bank holiday doesn't mean that there's no volume um, or no liquidity, I'm sorry. Um, meaning that most people assume that because it's a holiday that the market's not gonna move. That's actually false. Um, there's been plenty of holidays, bank holidays, where that particular currency has moved handsomely. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, sticking to your to your analysis. Um, so don't don't think that you know because it's a bank holiday that you're not going to have any good trade setups on USD pairs. Um, so yeah, but again, I would be a little bit wary due to the fact that NFP is Friday, so there may be low liquidity due to that. Um, but bank holiday, I don't ever um, shy away from bank holidays. Do you trade NFP? And if yes, how? 
Um, I never trade any news in particular. Um, if I'm in a trade, um, like if I'm in a trade before news happens, like I'll stay in the trade. And honestly, outside of NFP and ECB and uh, BOJ, uh, BOJ being um, the yen major news, which doesn't happen very often, um, ECB being for like Euro. Outside of those, I don't really pay attention to news. Like you'll rarely see me on um, Forex Factory or whatever website you guys use to check check the news on a particular currency. Um, I don't really ever check that. I just go off my analysis um, because the news either A, is going to continue the trend or B, it's going to, to start a pullback. And if you're enter, entering a trade where there's a possible pullback, meaning that you're late to that trade, you shouldn't be getting in regardless because you're late. You're late. So for example, like, if you're if you're getting in here, you're late, right? So this is why I say I'm not going to enter right here. I'm going to wait for it to pull back. Now, price could um, price could end up not pulling back, and it's just going to tank from here, and that's fine. I always say missed trades are better than losing trades because of lack of patience. Um, discipline is like the biggest thing in the market. So always make sure that you know you're you're staying disciplined with your trading plan. Um, but to answer your question, no, I don't trade NFP. I don't trade any particular news, but I will keep my trades open during news if I feel as though price is going to, to continue in that direction. Or I'll, at minimum, excuse me, at minimum, I will move my stop loss to either my entry or a little bit past it to at least conserve some, some type of profit off of that trade in case the news goes in another direction and it starts to pull back. Like if I'm short and the news, you know, goes bullish because it's, starting the 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 pullback or whatever um you know i'll at least have some type of profits um maintained from that trade um so it doesn't go to waste um but yeah and, and again i don't it's one of those things where if you want to trade news it's perfectly fine just make sure that your analysis is, is correct you know um sometimes that's where lower time frames come into play you know like that 15 minute chart and whatnot um you can kind of <laughs> kind of gauge where the news is going to go at least for that short term, you know, during that news, uh, market always leaves footprints, even on the lower time frame. So um, it's not that I don't recommend trading it or I, or I preach against it. It's just a, a personal thing. I just don't trade news in particular. Um, so hopefully that um, that helps. But yeah, if, if you want to trade news, so the second part of your question, how? I would just analyze the lower time frames on that particular currency pair. Um, and see if you can find it like a clear setup, but it has to be super, super clear. Um, but like Stanley says, yeah, don't go, don't go chasing trades. Um, so yeah, hopefully that, that helps you, Arthur. Um, yeah, I, I used to trade NFP though, um, to be quite honest, I used to trade NFP, but NFP is like super weak now. Um, it never really, back in like 2015, 2016, NFP used to be super strong and you either made a lot of money real fast or you lost a lot of money real fast. NFP has been super weak the past year and a half. All of like 2017 and like all of this year, it's not exciting at all. I don't know what happened, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's not what it used to be. If any of you guys were trading back then three, four years ago, like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, NFP used to be super, super lit. Um, and now it's like super boring. So <laughs> I, I wouldn't even recommend it. In five seconds, it would go up 100 pips. So like, if, you, if you were wrong, like if you were wrong, you lost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. you were right, you made money fast like that, and you mm -hmm. had to, that was the best day of your life. You know? Um, Fucking volatile ass shit. It, get, bro, I'm telling you, I used to make a ton of money off NFP, and then it started, it just getting, started getting weak. So, honestly, the, the, CAD news is pretty strong sometimes. Um, ECB is pretty strong. BOJ is pretty strong sometimes. Uh, certain Aussie news are pretty strong. Like if you look at the red folders on Forex Factory, um, if you guys use Forex Factory, you know what I'm talking about, the red folders and stuff. Um, but yeah, NFP has been super weak. So I wouldn't even recommend trading it based off of that because you ain't, ain't going to make much money just off that news. So not like 2015, man. That was, man, those were the days. Those are the glory days of NFP. They're going now, so. Yo, let's go on, DJ. DJ, good choice, good choice. I haven't analyzed that yet, and I want to. So we'll do that live, because I want to uh, 
GB. Yeah. All right. FXCI. All right. So, aha. So we have another gap here. I think all the yen pairs may have gap because I was it EJ they got. It was UK. One of them. I don't. I can't remember. Anyways, let's do some analysis. Yes, why Oh yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So. GJ currently, okay, so let's, um, how do I get rid of this? Okay, boom, all right. So GJ technically, okay, is in a downtrend. However, we have a decent amount of confluences here that would, uh, that would kind of, give you a, a bullish bias for the time being. However, it all depends on this next candle because we had a gap below your moving average. So if it closes below here, then it could definitely go bullish and my target would be 140 um, on the short side. However, we do have a previous supply zone that is now a demand zone. You had price close above your moving averages and this demand zone, I mean, and the supply zone making it a demand zone and you had your moving averages cross to the upside on the daily time frame. Um, so this is the little bit of a larger scope of this. Um, let's go down to the four hour time frame. And again, we always read and react. So, okay, so this is a little bit different story. Now we go to the four hour time frame, and now I would have a bearish bias because we had price come back up and retest your major half point at 145, close back below your averages, okay? Your averages crossed again, okay? So until price closes above, um, your averages again, I'm not taking this long. So I'm a little bit torn in the near future here for GJ. Um, but just know it can go either way. Um, right now it's, I would say on based off the H4 time frame, I would say bearish. Um, however, that could also change because we also can get a bounce here and it can continue up because on the daily time frame, right, it hasn't closed below the averages on, on the daily time frame yet. Okay, so this daily, I'll probably wait till Asia tomorrow when the daily candle closes to see where this is at before I, before I even think about entering a trade on GJ. Um, because like I said, this could go either way um, with the time being. But as you can see here, we do have this, this zone right here, which uh, technically, technically right now is a supply zone. Um, it's what it's acting as, but based off of this candle, it's still in the demand zone. So we'll see what happens uh, with, with GJ. Um, I don't really have a directional bias to give you guys at this moment, but it's more so read and react. And, and I, I'll, I'll be in the chat tomorrow, um, you know, giving people updates if they need it. Um, only time there's really funny in the market is during Christmas and New Year's. We went back to school. Yeah, um, in recent years, as in like the last two years, um, so anybody in here, I, I don't know if anybody was, but anybody, um, that in, in, in this chat that, um, was trading back in, uh, 2015 and 2016, or really 2015, I don't think it happened in 2016 yet, duh, Stanley. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways, anybody that was trading around that time when, Thanksgiving and Christmas came and the markets closed or whatever, um, the spreads would go up astronomically. I mean, to the point where like you would be a hundred percent in profit and be negative if you had a trade open. Um, that didn't happen last year. Um, and I don't know if it even happened in 2016, but it didn't happen last year. Um, and I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but yeah, during those times, during Thanksgiving and Christmas and like New Year's and stuff, just be a little bit wary around those times. Um, the markets will still move. It may be a little bit slow, but just from a spread standpoint, I'd stay away during those times because I remember in 2015, I was up probably like 120 pips on a pair uh, with, with like, it was a swing setup. So I was going, I was going for a certain target and the market closed. It was like Thanksgiving Eve in the evening. And uh, I, I, at market close, I was negative. And I was 100, 120 pips up technically, but the spread was so big that I was actually negative pips. So to the spread. So don't put yourself in situations where manipulation can get the better of you. 
such as holidays or stuff like that or you know major news that's why i don't that's why i don't trade major news because sometimes it doesn't continue the trend i mean it will afterwards but the news itself will actually cause manipulation for example this candle right here this candle is manipulation don't get fooled by these candles right here okay this is what they call a momentum candle so what happens is um this candle forms on the daily time frame and um fomo kicks in or fear of missing out so fomo fear of missing out happens and this is why 97 98 whatever plus percent of retail traders fail is because they see this trade right here and they say ah, i can't miss out i can't miss out on this bull run it's gonna skyrocket right and what happens the next two candles are bullish it pulls right back so now you have your weekly okay this is good so let's look at the weekly time frame now you have your weekly candle close like this boom okay so you have you have your morning star off of 140 your major large okay and price comes up now keep in mind this doesn't constitute a, a complete trend change okay so don't think just because it's on a higher time frame that excuse me that um and you see a morning star that it's going to completely change the entire trend it's not necessarily the case um that's why you always want to react and not, and not predict. So let's go back down to the four hour time frame, or was it a daily time frame? Yeah, yeah, daily time frame. So as you can see here, boom, a lot of people entered right here. There's a psychological reasons I know that, and the market makers know that. Like there's there, a lot of people like they diss the market maker method, but there's a lot of truth in, in what Steve Morrow says about um, manipulation and and we're not so don't fall for these types of candles if you see a big candle like this most likely price is going to pull away from it it's at least going to retrace 50 percent of this candle um before it either a continues up or b completely just pulls away and shifts away from this from this candle right here so always make sure that when you see these types of candles or you see a huge wick trade away from it when I say trade away from it, like just take a trade blindly because you see this candle. I mean, obviously do some analysis. I always remember that the original trend is slow. Fake news are usually fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, it, for example, let, let's say, you know, uh, this is why I don't trade news. For example, let me just give you guys an example real quick. So I'm just attempt to draw a candle here. Um, not much of an artist, but let's, um, Let's move this down a little bit. Uh, let's let's make this red. Okay. All right. So this is the bearish candle. Now, you entered on the previous candle. You entered short because you knew news was coming. The trend is down. This is just a, a hypothetical situation. All right. So you entered on the previous candle because again, it was a downtrend. News is coming. You're like, all right, news. We're gonna continue. We're gonna, we're gonna continue to. Uh, to see a, a, a downtrend, bearish momentum. So what happens is, right, <coughs> they bring the market all the way up here and take all the stops out, right? So at one point, this is a full body bullish candle all the way up here. So A, A, right, it looks like this at one point, right? So A, you're getting the, the FOMO people buying because like, I don't want to miss out on this, on this, uh, on, on this bullish run so they pump and dump it so they come up right they bring the market all the way up here they take out all the stops Every, any stops that are above your uh psychological um uh, your, your psychological price points so your your quarter points any any major uh support or resistance um in the market um your psychological points are all whole numbers this is this is where the quarters theory is derived from so it'll it'll come up all all your psychological levels where stop losses would be they come up take all them all them stop losses out and then boom most people will enter before the news and either a they'll enter before the news or during the news so either a they get stopped out or b they get fucked because they went long on this candle missing thinking that they're going to miss out on the bullish run the smart trader waits for this candle to close so i see this candle right here i see a long way to the top I knew it was news, so I knew they were taking out stop losses. They got what they needed. Boom, I'm short here. And hey, the mark they may they may come back up here, and maybe retest this or come back up here and retrace fifty percent of the candle. But nine times out of ten, that 
that the market is going to continue down for that. And your entry is after this trade. So going back to the whole news thing, always make sure that you're being smart and you're trading against the market maker instead of, instead of trying to, uh, I mean, tra trading with the market maker instead of trying to trade against it, against them, because they're going to wipe you out. If you fall for these types of candles, right, you're going to get wiped out. So <clears> how <throat> we say, be patient, wait for, wait for the setup to come to you and execute afterwards. So again, exercising your discipline, you know, like I was, I was saying, I was saying earlier, you know, a lot of people get, they get so antsy. Like I got to enter this trade. I got to enter this trade now. You know, like I was saying earlier uh, with Dakota, like you know, a lot of people ask me like, how do I, how do I say discipline with my diet? Well, I just don't buy things that I know would be bad for me. It's literally that simple. You just, if you don't, if you know you're not supposed to eat something, just don't buy it. If you know you're not supposed to place that lot size, if you know you're not supposed to trade right before major news is, is going to happen, if you know you're not supposed to um, enter a trade on Sunday, whatever, whatever is in your trading plan that you should have written out, um, because there's no such thing as an imaginary trading plan. Write it out. Write it out on paper or write it on your computer, in your notes or whatever, you know, on your, on your, your notepad, whatever you have. Um, I, have I have a MacBook. Um, write it out. And stick to those guidelines. Stick stick to that trading plan because the moment you start breaking that, you start you start to uh, you start to lose money. And you the name of the game is positive equity curve. You want to see your account continue to grow. So stay disciplined and don't fall for these stupid tricks. Because again, a lot of people went long with this. A lot of people I know for a fact, absolutely for a fact. I probably know some traders and maybe some of y'all went long with this. Um, hopefully you didn't. But anyways, don't fall for these, uh, Jason. Okay, wait for it to break structure. And yes, that was me. Super impatient, but be patient and a fast reactor. Yeah, I mean everybody's going through it. I'm not. I'm not perfect. I've, I'm speaking from experience. I've act, I've actually done these things, which is why I'm telling you guys now. You know, don't fall for these tricks. Don't fall for stuff like this. You know, where you see this huge candle and then you immediately enter long. Now, sometimes this can be good because you say, okay, price now is. Um, it broke above the moving average. Okay, now I'm waiting for it to retrace a little bit. So when you see a big candle like this, more times than not, it's going to retrace about 50%. So, you know, if, you, if that takes you drawing a Fibonacci just on this candlestick, that's fine. Um, but before it continues, it's probably going to retrace about 50%. So if you wait, you can get a really ideal entry on some of these setups um, based off of this, these types of candles right here. Um, just for being patient and it pays off because you don't have much drawdown. You want to minimize your drawdown as much as you can. A sell off from that level was also 61.8 from this high. Oh, probably for, from this high right here, I guess. What are we talking about? What is it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Boom. See? There you go. You have another confluence. Price is turning down. Came up and retested your major half point. Came up and, and fell right at sixty one point eight. You could have went short right here, knowing that it's a downtrend. Um, no, from high. Yeah, I got you, bro. I got you. And um, you can also the same way that I draw um, trend lines and, and structure on the line chart. I also some uh, most of the time draw my Fibonacci using the line chart. So I'll um, this. I mean, as you can see, if I go to my line chart, you see it lines up perfectly. Boom, boom, boom. And like I said, with experience, you'll, you'll kind of get that to where you don't, you don't even have to go to the line chart um, to do it. You just kind of know that, okay, here's, here's my, my peaks on my line chart. Um, but yeah, 61.8, always look for 61.8 or in this zone of 61.8 to 78.6. This is your golden zone right here. Ah, I hate the color red. Hold up. I'm weird with color guys. I really believe in like energies and stuff and like, all right, there we go. All right. So this zone right here, uh, 61.8 to 70.6 is a good reversal zone. Um, 61.8 in particular by itself is really, is probably the best one in my opinion, but anywhere in the zone is a good reversal zone. So right here, like that was, that was a good, uh, thanks for pointing that out, Stan. Cause, um, I didn't even notice that, but yeah, 
um, <clears throat> use your Fibonacci tool. It's there. For, it's there for you. I don't really use it personally. Um, I do sometimes, but um, just like I said, a, a lot of my trading now comes from experience, and it's kind of hard to explain. But once you guys get more inept with your methodology and reading charts and, and candlesticks and stuff, um, some of the stuff you'll be able to strip completely. So for me, really, all I use is candlesticks and qu my quarter points. And like I said, sometimes trend lines, sometimes. Um, and then sometimes I'll draw separate support and resistance um, just based off the line chart and my moving averages. And that's pretty much it. So, um, but the tools are there to so use them. Use your Fibonacci, use your trend lines, you know, use all, the, all those things. Um, uh, but as far as um, like indicators and stuff, I don't use anything. Technically, technically um, the moving averages are indicators, but uh, I'm talking more like the RSI. Um, if anybody uses the TDI, that's one, the CCI, um, the Commodity Channel Index, um, MACD and stuff like that. Um, the Ichimoku cloud or however you say it. Um, um, if you guys were to ask me questions on those, I really wouldn't be able to answer them. Maybe RSI and stuff, but um, I don't use them. They're lagging indicators. Um, I'm not really a fan of them, but some people can use them. Um, some people, I mean, everybody can use them. What I mean is some people, it's effective for them. You know, they use it for divergence and stuff like that. I don't really um, base my trades off divergence. But uh, but yeah, my my personal thing is I don't I don't use any any kind of like indicators. They're all lagging. Even moving averages are lagging. To be honest, I don't really need them. I have them there just really because. Um, but honestly, you don't you don't really need them. Cause, but they do help. For example, like this right here. You know, you have an evening star off of your off of your SMA. I mean, that's a that's a pretty good um that's a pretty good short right there. But um, other than that, I don't I don't really um. Uh, What's that? We use divergence with RSI. Yeah, like I said, it, that works. That works for some people. You know, some people are are. Um, it's very effective for them to use the RSI for divergence. Um, hold up one second. I'm trying to have my computer die. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for some people, it's it's you know they find it effective. Me, I don't really um I don't care for it. Um, I'm not against it. Uh, I just don't teach it. So if you guys have questions about indicators or the RSI in particular, Stanley's your guy, or I'm assuming Dakota as well. Um, but I personally don't don't use them. I would I don't know how to read a MACD or a CCI. CCI is actually pretty similar to to RSI. Um, but yeah, the, the cloud and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't use any of that stuff. Um, just kind of clouds my charts. No pun intended. The day it's all about getting that chart time and training on some of that. Which is nice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. You know, when you guys, when, when you put the chart time in, um, that's where the experience factor comes in, where it's like somebody asks you a question, and the only way you can answer is just because that's through experience, you just know. You, you, just, you just know. It's intuition. It's, it's, just repetition of back testing and, and seeing it with your eyes. Like I always say, like, if you can see it in hindsight, you can see the foresight. This is why I always recommend back testing. So like, you know, when the market's closed, you know, going back and, and seeing how price reacts to your quarter points, how it reacts to um, your Fibonacci, um, you know, look at when price shifts the zone. Um, look at the candlesticks around the area. You know, what did price do? Did it create a double top? Did it create a, a head and shoulders on the lower time frame? So then you can then you can start utilizing the um the lower time frames. You like looking at price action? Yeah, just a bare chart, man. The 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 least amount of things I can have have on my chart, the better. Which is why sometimes I don't even draw trend lines or or anything or use Fibonacci or anything like that because it just crowds my chart. Um, not saying it's not useful, um, but again through experience you you start to realize that you don't necessarily need that. Um, again, it's not that it's not useful. It's just that you don't, it's almost like training wheels, essentially, where it's like, you know, you use training wheels when you first start riding a bike, and then you get used to riding the bike and you learn how to balance yourself without the wheels. You don't need those training wheels anymore. And I'm not saying that technical analysis tools are training wheels and that you only need them at the beginning. It's more so, like I said, when you get to a point where you're just in tune with the charts and you understand raw price action and candlesticks and whatnot, 
you, you start to realize you don't necessarily need those things. Um, I still use them from time to time, but it's not part of my everyday analysis. Um, normally I'll come onto a chart, I'll see where price is, I'll analyze the trend, and I'll know if I have a setup based off of my candlesticks. Whenever it wants to move, it has to make an indication to move, whether a wick or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah like I said, um, the thing with candlesticks is, um, you know, they're like footprints. Um, you know, the, 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 they'll leave footprints as far as where price is going to go. Um, and so, you know, like I said, learn how to analyze a trend. And once you, once you know how to read a trend and you know, you can look on the chart and say, okay, this is a downtrend, this is an uptrend, then you know what you're looking for. You know, if it's a downtrend, you're only looking for sales. So then you're okay. Okay. Am I late to the move? Okay. Let me wait for a retrace and then see when price gives me a bearish reversal pattern off of previous structure or off of my moving average. And then I'm going to execute my short, you know, simple things like that, you know, but again, stuff like that comes with time and, and being able to read a chart. Like I can come onto a chart now after four plus years of trading and know if I have a setup within five minutes. See now, Going on the four hour chart, like I said, my, my bias is bearish. I'm a little bit late though, right? I didn't catch it up here. So I'm going to wait for price to retrace back um, up here somewhere and, and maybe short it if, if the opportunity presents itself. But I'll have to monitor that closely, you know, to see if I can find a uh, good setup there for me to take. But, um, but yeah, always, always, always wait for price to give you an indication. Just because you think price is going to go somewhere doesn't mean it's going to go there. Um, that's, I mean, that's pretty, pretty much common sense, but always make sure that, um, that you're disciplined enough to wait for the setup and not chase a trade like Samuel was saying before. Don't never chase a trade because if you miss a trade, that's fine. If you lose a trade because you weren't disciplined enough to wait for it, that's even worse. So I'd rather miss out on money than lose money because, again, it's all about positive equity curves. So. Um, any other pairs or any questions in regards to trading in general, any, anything involving like mindset or anything, feel free to, um, to ask away. Um, let me see what other pairs and what was I going to look at? Hold up. Oh, CG, GFC. Um, I guess let's do pound Aussie. Let's do pound Aussie. Cause I want to look at that too. I don't really, I don't really do pound kiwi. Um, that one's like super volatile, and sometimes it ranges forever. Um, but let's take a look at, at pound Aussie. And for those of you that don't know what kiwi is, that's the New Zealand dollar. Um, okay, so this this one right here. Okay, yeah, this is this is bullish right now. Let me see. Let's look at the weekly time frame. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, oh yeah. Okay, so right now it's right at, all right, I gotta read this chat real quick. I thought we were trading fruits. I was gonna ask for analysis on Apple next. Uh, well, I can analyze the Apple. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's like, anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I gotta delete this chat real quick. All right, so as we can see here, price is right at 1.8. Yeah, 1.8, okay. So is that, is that your major large um, right here, 1.8? So to be honest, uh, since it's sitting there, obviously we're late, so don't take this long yet. Okay, we may have an opportunity um, once it retraces. So I'm assuming it's probably going to drop to like right around here, 7.788. Uh, no one pound also is probably going to drop a little bit steeper. Um, so let's let's take our, our fib tool real quick and draw this out. All right, I mean, we could see a drop to, to in this range right here. Um, I would look for a trade once it once it retraces. I'm not going to I'm not going to take this long right now, but to be honest, um, I, I do eventually have a, lo a, a long um, bias on, on this, especially um, having a bearish bias on Aussie dollar. Um, normally those two will uh, 
trend inversely. Um, as far as what I've noticed, it'll, it'll trend inversely. And we also had a trend line here. This is probably the third bounce on it too, based off the line chart. Yep. Boom. Uh, let me see what somebody. Ryan, here's the ECH of Nets. I believe a third level job coming. Let's ask Steve Morrow. All right, so USDCHF. All right, yeah, so guys, uh, pound all seed. I'll wait for a retrace and then probably look for a long um, somewhere in this area right here. Um, but again, we just react. So I'll see what happens. I'll see what happens over the next day. That's so over pound all seed. But let's go take a look at, at um, pound franc. I mean, uh, dollar franc. CHF. Ooh, okay. Um, this one, okay. So based off of this chart right here, let's saying that we didn't do any analysis on the DXY. Based off this chart right here, I would say price is gonna retrace to your large quarter point at 0 0.975 and then drop to 0.95. Now, um, that could also change. Let's see, uh, I didn't do any analysis on this pair, so let me see what we have here. Let's look at that four hour time frame. <laughs> All right, yeah, so this, this, still looks, this still looks real bearish to me. Um, uh, let me see. Let's go to the weekly time frame. Okay, yeah, I mean, this still looks really strong. I, again, um, bearish um but let's draw a fibonacci because let's see if it's at um where i think it is yeah it's at about 38.2 all right um yeah this one's this one's tough because i want to say i want to say it's going to continue bearish but um my bias on the dxy is making me a little bit biased but um this one i just had to react to because we are late so again we're gonna have to wait for at least wait for some type of pullback if you're not already in. If you're not already in this trade, don't short this yet. At least wait for it to retrace up to here. You see your averages are about to cross here on the four-hour time frame. It closed above the um, your EMA. Prices in between, most likely it's going to continue up. So it's at least going to come up to here at 0.975. Okay, so you have about 60 pips um, from where price is currently to where this next structure is at 0.975. So minimum it's going to come up to here. We'll see what happens when it gets here. And that's when I'll react as far as having a, a, a directional bias on, on dollar franc. Because if it closes above on a daily, okay, we could probably see a bounce and continue up. Or again, we could see a bounce off of this and continue down. So right now, I would, personally, I would wait on this, wait to see what it's gonna do around this area right here. So if you have, if you have um, a pro account with TradingView, just set an alert, set an alert for like right here at 0.975 and, um, and then monitor price once it gets there. How do I, damn, all right, here we go. Hey, look at the monthly bearish engulfing after Doji. All right, hold up. Yep. Yeah, bearish engulfing, but you also have, uh, just eyeing it, you also have a potential inverted head and shoulders too. So um, this this bearish engulfing doesn't really mean too much at the time, because technically pro, uh, the average is still crossing upside. You can set alerts with that app called Call Level. Shout out to Dakota putting on. Yeah, or you can use Call Levels. I've heard of that before. Um, I don't normally set alerts. Um, I, I probably should, but um, but yeah, ca uh, Call Levels I've used in the past. Uh, it's been a long time since I used Call Levels, but um. But yeah, call those is good. Or like I said, if you have a pro account with TradingView, you can have a free account. You can set one alert, so you can use it. You can use it once, uh, and you can get it sent directly to your to your phone. So I have it. I have it on TradingView to where I can get my alerts sent as a text message. Um, you just have to put in, uh, for example, if you want it on this. Um, you still look at it. yeah. Oh yeah, this is. I'm glad you brought that up, Stan, because a lot of people this confuses a lot of people. So I want to go over this. So I just type in JPN225 and hit enter. So um, this is the yen index. So, but this also confuses people. So let me explain. Oh, that's why it's on the monthly. 
Um, this, this index confuses people when I try to explain it. So let me try to explain it the best way that I can. So um, the JPN 225 is a direct correlation to the yen itself. But most brokers only offer yen. <clears throat> um, what's the word I'm looking for? Base. Um, yen is the secondary currency in the pair. Um, I'm drawing a blank right now. I'm tired. Um, yen and quote pairs. That's what I meant. So the first currency in the pair is a base pair as the base currency. The second currency in the pair is the quote currency. So most brokers only offer yen quote pairs. Um, so this actually, I'm sorry, the way that I explained it first is wrong. This is a direct correlation to yen quote pairs. So <clears throat> it's an inverse correlation to the yen itself. So whatever analysis you have on this is the analysis you'll have on yen pairs, like GJ, UJ, NJ, whatever, whatever yen quote pair there is. So as you can see here, <clears throat> technically you have inverted head and shoulders here. Um, I don't know why I have this line drawn, but I'm going to move it up here. Um, as you can see, this neckline hasn't been broken. This structure here at point at uh, two twenty three thousand. I guess we'll just edit this real quick. Boom! So it's an even number. Whoops. Whatever. Anyways, you guys get it. So here at twenty three thousand, uh, price has not closed above it. So for the time being, um, it's bearish. So let me write this out for you guys, so you guys can like pause this video and write it down because it is recorded. So JPN 225, okay, just type it in up here in the box and hit enter, okay, it is a direct, direct correlation to JPY quote pairs. So when I say JPY quote pairs, this is what I mean. The yen is, is the quote currency, it's the second currency in the pair. So if it was the base currency, it would be the front currency. Okay, so where XXS is, it would be flipped. Okay, so this index is kind of opposite of what DXY. DXY is direct correlation to the US dollar. So if you have a bearish bias on the DXY, then you have a bearish bias on USD base pairs. Whereas in this case, it's a direct correlation to JPY quote pairs. Uh, let me, how do I get the, there we go. Uh, meaning if JPN is going up, JPY pairs go down. No. <laughs> nah, I remember saying you said I trouble with this one too. Um, no. Listen, listen, guys, really quick. Because <laughs> I remember saying you used to have trouble with this too. It's fine because almost everybody did. Yeah, if if this index, if you, all right, let's say you have a bearish bias on this index, then you'll have a bearish bias on your yen pairs. If you have a bullish bias on this index, then you'll have a bullish bias on the yen pairs. Does that make sense? All right, let me, let me do all this out. So, what the heck? Oh, here we go. The DXY. So the DXY is the US dollar index, right? So if you have, it's a direct correlation to USD base pairs. So if you have a bearish bias on DXY, that means you probably have a bearish bias on dollar franc. So USD CHF, right? Because the DXY is a direct correlation to the dollar. The JPN 225 is an inverse correlation to the yen. So because of that, it's a direct correlation to yen quote pairs. Okay, so you see the difference? So this, this, um, this index right here, okay, is a direct correlation to pairs that have JPY as a secondary currency. DXY is a direct correlation to pairs that have USD as the first currency or the base currency. Correct, yeah, stand, oh, fuck. Five. Um, yeah, yeah, correct. So if you have a bullish bias on the JPN 225, then you have a bullish bias on all the yen pairs. And when I say yen pairs, I mean pairs like this, yen quote pairs, because almost all brokers only offer these 
yen pairs is the yen quote pairs. Then I've, I've rarely ever seen a, a broker offer yen base pairs. So, so yeah. So if you guys want to analyze this, just type in JPN225 and understand that it's a direct correlation to JPY quote pairs. So for, all right, let me write this out for, so you guys aren't confused. So the first currency in a pair is the base pair. It's the base currency, sorry. The second currency is the quote currency. Okay, whoops. Grammar police. Um, yeah. So JPN 225, direct correlation to JPY quote pairs. Um, DXY, direct correlation to USD base pairs. Okay, so um, what did I? Here we go. So write this down, screenshot it, whatever you have to do. If you're watching this on a replay, just yeah, either screenshot it or, or write it down. Make sure you remember that because most people at the beginning, I explain it just like this and it'll still be confused. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people learn at slower paces than others. There's nothing wrong with that. But just understand that <laughs> this index right here is a direct correlation to JPY quote pairs. Okay. So JPY would be the secondary currency in this pair. So USD, JPY, G GBP, JPY. CHF, JPY, um, NZD, JPY, et cetera. All, C, all CN, it doesn't matter. Um, now, it doesn't mean that all of these JPY co-pairs, let's, let's say you have a bearish bias on this right here, or yeah, let's say you have a, a bearish bias on a JPN 225. It doesn't mean that all yen pairs are gonna go bearish because it also depends on the base pair. So it depends on the Aussie, it depends on the Euro, it depends on the dollar, it depends on the pound, the franc, um, it depends on all those as well. So sometimes you'll have UJ going up and GJ going down. Just depends on the on the base currency. But you'll get you'll get a a, a basic um, bias on the yen itself uh, based off of this um, index right here. So utilize this the same way you would utilize the DXY. Um, there's other ind index ind indices. I guess is the proper term. The the plural form of index. Um, there's other indices for the Aussie, the Euro and stuff that I don't use. I don't even know what they are, to be honest. Um, maybe Stan does, but I, I don't. I only use these two right here because um, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Dakota, all right, so Dakota does. So ask Coda um, what, the, uh, what the indices are for the other, other currencies. Um, I don't use them, so I don't know them, but they have them. So, yeah, utilize those. Don't weigh too heavily on them. Just kind of use them as, a, as like an extra confluence. Like this is the last thing I look at when I analyze a pair. Okay, yeah, see, there you go. Um, this is the last thing I analyze when I analyze a pair. I always just look at the chart because in reality, it, it depends on both currencies in that pair. You know what I'm saying? So USD JPY may be moving different than USD CHF because maybe the yen is super strong at that point and, you know, it's, it's drawing USD JPY up where USD CHF is going down. So it just depends. Um, I think that happened last week too. So, um, yeah. Any, um, any other questions, anything? Damn, I can't believe we've been on here for an hour and 40 minutes already. <laughs> um, if not, I guess we'll, um, hope everyone's taking notes. Now this dropped. Um, yeah, I mean, if if you guys have any questions after you after after this, or if you're watching this on a replay after you watch it, just hit me up. Hit me up in the chat, or you can follow me on Instagram. I guess I don't really post any trading stuff on Instagram, but this is my um, Instagram. If anybody is is uh, curious, I post a lot of like health and fitness stuff um, on there. I don't really post any of my any business related stuff. I don't really like people knowing what I do. Um, so yeah, but, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, either hit me on telegram or Insta Instagram and, um, let me know. I'm willing to help anybody. Same thing with Stan and, and Dakota and, and everybody else that's, you know, I guess considered a, a top trader. I don't really like to use that term, but, um, but yeah, hit us up. Um, I'm going to wrap up. I'm getting, I'm getting my voice is getting tired, but, um, but yeah. All right, guys, hope you guys have a great night. And like I said, any, any, any questions, um, I'm an open book. So just let me know. I also don't like that term. Much, much. 
Absolutely, Jesse. Or I, I keep – it says Jesse or Dakota. All right, all right, Dakota. All right, guys. Um, have a nice night. See you all later. How do I end this call now?